Exactly 10 o'clock on the dot. CS Ababu Namwamba joins us back on the white table. Thank you for staying. You, are, you would have opted to leave. You know, like an athlete, you would have run away. <laughs> <laughs> I have no reason to, to do a Mauritian. A Mauritian. <laughs> Thank you for staying on. I guess yeah. let's start from uh, um, where we left. Uh, because a couple of days ago, the president, uh, um, during the uh, contract signing, but you are not one of the people who are late. I never saw your name on the <laughs> I mean, uh, we have a, a, a team leader who expects absolute discipline. Mm -hmm. And timekeeping is, uh, is, 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 is really, really a mark of discipline. Has it always been like that? Because you worked with him for a long time. Yes, yes, yes. Stick like uh, time. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, uh, President William Ruto has always been a, a stickler for time, a stickler for, for deadlines. Um, a stickler for attention to detail. Mm -hmm. So this is him. So it, yeah. it's true when he says, perhaps he knows what's happening in other ministries more than the people who absolutely, those ministries. Absolutely, absolutely. I have no doubt about that. I have no doubt that he, he keeps abreast. He keeps abreast of things. He's very deliberate. He's very intentional. He's very structured. He's very hands-on. Uh, that is his style. And where this country is, that is a style that is absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. Yes, to get things done. So essentially, the president knows <coughs> basically what's happening in this government and beyond. Even the he, other he, he, he keeps abreast. He keeps abreast. He keeps abreast. Yes. So yeah. my question then is: um, Do you think all these allegations that were coming against you, the president did not know about them? You're asking me to second guess my <laughs> my <laughs> boss. <laughs> <laughs> not really. The reason why Kenya Kwanzaa is his <coughs> ruling party, is his party. Mm. I mean, look at the caliber of people who's been thinking. Mm. Gerard Gay, Simon Gerard Gay, mm. is the president's man. Look at uh, the deputy speaker. Mm. Uh, that's uh, someone who works very closely with the mm. president. Look at the majority leader in parliament. You mm. think mm. the president was not aware? Ishuma, Shole, Gerard Gay. Forget about the other side who are saying this. Thing. You're saying you're not. First of all, uh, I have no doubt that um, the president respects the independence of uh, parliament to do its oversight work. I'm not the first cabinet secretary to go into, into, into parliament and be put to task on issues that parliament wishes to be, to be clarified mm -hmm. or issues that parliament wishes to see receive attention. And, and really, this, this is the norm in a democracy. Um, in fact, I would say the revision of standing orders to allow cabinet secretaries to come to plenary is, is a very progressive one because then you can go in there, you can feel the mood of members of parliament because parliament normally uh, works very much on mood. You can, you, can, you can get to understand how members of parliament feel. In fact, after the, after the session, I went to the, to the tea lobby, to the, like, like the, the lobby where members of parliament hang out. Mm -hmm. And I spent quite a, a bit of time there. To, to interact with members of parliament. And I could understand where some of them are coming from. I could understand um, um, uh, some of them have the concern that certain things are happening that they would wish to have more information about. They would wish to be more involved, like the whole Talanta Hela initiative. They want to be more involved. They can see governors involved. They can see county assemblies involved. They can see CECs of sports involved but they just feel they are not fully they're not fully and that's something which i i, I completely understand okay yeah I, i'll go back to that because um that the statement from the president and it was said at the house of power the state house um and barely two weeks uh this ladies and gentlemen honorable members of parliament come out and put you in that mix so to say and say um you have not performed in your ministry and they even call for you to take political accountability and step aside. So it brings the image that perhaps you're one of the people who the president was referring to. Goes to my question because you are someone who is not new in that territory. I have no doubt whatsoever that I'm competent to run this ministry. This is not the first time I'm running the Ministry of Sports. I have run this ministry effectively before. When you look at my track record, as a minister for sports in the coalition government, I achieved so much. Today you talk about the Sports Act. I am the author of the Sports Act. 
I'm the one who even moved the Sports Act on the floor of Parliament because at that time, I was both Member of Parliament for Budalangi and Minister for Sports and Youth Affairs, mm -hmm. the National Youth Council. Since I activated the National Youth Council when I was Minister, way back in 2012, no other action had, in fact, the National Youth Council got stuck. It's never moved. And forward. there has never been a National Youth Council mm. since the one I activated mm. in 2012, 2013. I am working on reactivating the National Youth Council pretty much after, after coming back. So on the question of competence, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind mm -hmm. that I have what it takes to um, run this ministry effectively. I have demonstrated that in the manner in which I've been able to address the challenges, in the manner in which I've been able to bring in new ideas like the whole Talanta Hela initiative is a completely like new way. It's a new idea. Mm -hmm. But even just fixing rewards for our sportsmen and women. Do you know, for instance, that uh, the Hongera Awards that I hosted uh, a month ago cleared debts of athletes who competed for this country mm -hmm. from the year 2010. They hadn't been paid, they hadn't been paid. for 13 years. I mean, from the year 2013. 2013 so so that's 10, 10 years, yes. So they, we were clearing a backlog, a backlog of, um, of claims. We were also able to do something that this country has never done before and just showing appreciation to legions people who won medals for this country um, at a time when we did not have any reward scheme. They reign for the flag. They reign for the honor of the country. We were able to do something for them. Offering support to football clubs. Today, Vihiga Queens are in Kampala in the Sekafa qualifiers for the CAF Women Champions League. We were able to give them 5 million shillings that has enabled them to go to, to, go to Kampala. Mm -hmm. Gurmahia, we were able to give them 10 million shillings, which has enabled them to sort out their troubles with, uh, with FIFA. Mm -hmm. The same thing with the FC Leopards. We were able to give money to Shabana, to Moranga Seal. Basically, putting money that has previously not been put to very good use to what the fund, the sports fund was meant to be. The okay. sports fund was meant to support sports. And in sports, the goose that lays the golden egg is the sportsman and woman. Yeah. And I believe you are putting resources in the right place. Okay. More progressive uh, democracies, and I know you, you could say this call in Parliament was ridiculous, that you step aside. But you think there is nothing in anything that was said that would even prick your conscience, say, because of the allegations that have been leveled against me. Let me leave and uh, clear my name, then see if President William Ruto can appoint me or reappoint me. There's nothing in your Let me ask you, did you hear anything? Did you discern anything that would bear substance to lead to a resignation? Maybe that's a rhetorical question. <laughs> but let me tell you that uh, I have resigned from office twice in my life. Okay. In 20... Uh, 16. I resigned as Secretary General of ODM. Voluntarily, I looked at the situation that I was operating in as a party Secretary General. I tendered my resignation. Last year, I resigned from the Foreign Office. I made a decision that uh, I wanted to support President William Ruto for President. And I believed that um, supporting him while at the same time holding public office did not sit well with me, did not sit well with my conscience. Not because it was lawful, it was a demand that no, 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 you were running? No, no, I wasn't running for office. I didn't run for an office in twenty. You didn't, but no, I didn't. The, the word talks about Babu wanting to run back no, 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 in no, no. I had made it very, very clear. Mm -hmm. I made it very clear to the people of Budalangi in 2017. Now, 2017 is the last time I was running for that parliamentary office. Two times. And, and I meant it. Yeah. I meant it that um, uh, uh, that was it as far as the Budalangi parliamentary seat was concerned. I made it clear that I was moving on to, to other things. I don't intend to change, to, change, uh, to change that position. And so when it comes to resignation on principle, mm -hmm. I am not new to resigning on principle. Okay. But you resigned on the basis of substance. 
I resigned from ODM on substance and principle. I resigned from the Foreign Office because I believed you should not be actively on the, on the campaign trail while at the same time holding public office. That is okay. principle. And if today anything were to be brought to me, either on account of um, integrity or an account of uh, gross misconduct of whatever nature, anything that constitutionally would obligate me to leave office, then I would certainly not hesitate to leave from, 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 from leaving office. Okay. But on issues of um, uh, uh, misunderstanding, where members of parliament want information, whether members of parliament want clarification of issues, I do not believe. And I also listened to Honorable Memusi Kanchori, mm -hmm. my very good friend. By the way, Honorable Memusi Kanchori, the member of parliament for Kajedo Central, who threw uh, that uh, challenge of resignation, is a very good friend of mine. He was my first member, member of parliament to deliver as ODM Secretary General. And um, I'm very proud of him. I went into Kajiado Central. I picked him up against, the, against a lot of resistance of people who did not want him to be the ODM candidate. I picked him up. I campaigned for him. He became member of parliament. It's amazing to see how he has grown. I listened to him. I don't know whether he was exactly, uh, he was exactly serious about, uh, about, about that matter. But uh, I, I, I told him that I have not seen anything sufficient that would, warrant, okay. that would warrant that would warrant a resignation. Let's talk about yeah. integrity and gross misconduct. <coughs> the allegations that were brought mm -hmm. also before uh, the plenary today. Mm -hmm. These are hundred million shillings. There was a question from a member <coughs> mm -hmm. about the hundred million shillings, and it was a direct question. Do you think it's the genesis of your troubles in the ministry? If ever there was any money that this ministry has spent, that Parliament should support that government should be proud of and that I'm supremely proud of myself. Of all the billions we spend, and we spend, we spend billions of money in this ecosystem. We just spend 1.3 billion shillings on the WRC Safari Rally. We spend hundreds of millions sending teams to various events. If there was money that I feel was truly well spent, it was at 100 million shillings. It is money which we spend to clear outstanding obligations to our athletes going back 10 years. In fact, over 50% of that money went to clearing those debts. Okay. It is money that we spend to support our football clubs that, number one, suffered the COVID lockdown, quickly followed by the FIFA suspension. Our football clubs have been in terrible condition. Mm -hmm. And they have just completed a league that had no sponsorship. And Kenyans, could, Kenyans even made a lot of issues about the fact that Gormahia won the Kenyan Premier League. Not a cent in, 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 in rewards from, uh, from the league. Yeah. The Higa Queens won the women version. Not a cent. Ulinzi Starlets won, won the cup. Kakamega Homeboys won the cup. Kakamega Homeboys right now are traveling, are preparing to travel to Benghazi tomorrow for the return leg yeah. of the CAF mm -hmm. uh, Confederation Cup. Mm -hmm. The five million shillings we gave them is what has enabled them to purchase tickets. Where was this money going to? Money that you find so easy and now you can spend it the way it's never been spent before. Where was this money going? And that's, the, that's exactly the point I'm making. Mm -hmm. The point I'm making is that we inherited a space that was really in a mess. And one of the things we have tried to do, and if this gets me into trouble, I would willingly take this trouble. Mm -hmm. If putting money in the pockets of uh, sportsmen and women, if putting money into sports, if ring fencing this money to support the growth of sports, puts me in trouble, then, then that is so trouble I would, I would, I would welcome. Okay. Because that really is the reason why we, sport, we put the sports fund in place. So that we can support our sportsmen and women, and we can support federations in the work they do, and we can support the development of talents in this country. So you're saying any audit of any kind of 
this 100 million shillings yes. will not reveal any impropriety. I have no doubt. And in any case, you know, this is not money that I spend. You see, as a cabinet secretary, my leadership of the ministry is very much at the policy level. I provide policy leadership and I provide direction. I can tell the ministry, I believe we should clear the debts we owe at least for 10 years. Mm -hmm. As um, guiding the ministry on a path to take, I can tell our ministry, let us spend some money to reward legions mm -hmm. that have never really been honored for all they contributed to, to serving this country. But when it comes now to the nitty gritties of, uh, of making the payments, mm -hmm. we have officers. We have uh, finance officers. We have the principal secretary who is the, both the chief, the, the accounting officer and the, um, the authorizing officer. So this is not a one-man show, as I said in parliament today. It is a team effort and different people play different roles. I believe that that money has been expended. I have talked to FC Leopards. FC Leopards have told me the five million shillings you awarded us, mm -hmm. we've been able to clear the debt with the, their former coach, Orson, and they have now been able to be cleared by FIFA to be able to compete in the season that is starting this weekend. Mm -hmm. Gormahia were able to do the same with the money that they were given. Kakamega homeboys have been able to purchase tickets to Libya with the money they were given. Uh, Vihiga Queens are able to participate in the assignment in Kampala. And so this money, you can actually see that is being put to use by the teams, by the federations, by the individual that it was intended to, intended to support. Okay. Mm. We will hold you to account because I know there's a lot of issues that are coming on, on this money because it was a direct question from mm. one member of parliament. Yes. So I Actually, ask, it was Honorable Waluke. Waluke who and his question that. was, yes. if I can paraphrase it or if you can mimic it, he said, is it possible that those who missed out may be using this platform to raise issue? And, 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 and I can tell you that um, we did not cover everybody. A hundred billion is not enough to cover everybody. Actually, you said more than half went to paying debts. So I'm yes. wondering, 50 million, because yes. they only, even with the mathematics that you've given me, yes. 10 million Gormaya, mm -hmm. 5 FC Leopards, yes. 5... So it's, it's, all, I mean, it's, all it's, gone. it's all gone. It's all gone. So, and they announced during the, I announced during that occasion that there are many other commitments which require to be supported, and the ministry must focus on exploring how to how to provide support. To okay, if there's other. any team that did not receive that money and <laughs> now Mombo is saying here tonight, that you say, please yes. tell us, we will hold him to account. Mm -hmm. So on, on, on that cash, away from that, mm -hmm. this allegation is not going away, Honorable mm -hmm. Namomba, <clears throat> about carrying um, non-essential members in the trip. It's not the first time even when you're a sports minister. Mm -hmm. I remember there was the reuse scandal. Yes. It was huge on... Yes. Carrying extras, yes. A, a, a cabinet secretary deciding to carry the spouse and the children mm. yes. and the neighbors and mm. the nanny and all that. Yes, it's not a new allegation, but it's coming during your time again. You explained it, and I like that explanation once more. Mm. This is not something that will be found in your ministry again as an audit. That w you, what I can tell you for free, mm -hmm. and I made this clear on the floor of the house, is that. Um, we are very keen on the austerity measures. And the president has made it clear to us in cabinet, in public, that the country is not in the best financial situation. Just the other day, the head of public service released a memo asking senior government officials to limit the number of days they travel out of the country. In fact, he put a cap on how many days you can be out of the country in a year. Mm -hmm. At the ministry, we have been implementing that even before that came out. I said today on the floor of parliament that I'm the least traveled cabinet secretary. Running the least funded ministry. Yes, running the least funded ministry, mm -hmm. but also running an extremely active ministry. Because there is always something happening everywhere. In any given month, we have our athletes, we have activities happening all over the world. In Boston, in New York in London, in Budapest, all over the place. And if we were the travel, happy-go-lucky kind of bunch, we'll out we would be all over the place. But mm. we are not. I mentioned that um, all the trips we have had, major events, 
Bathurst in Australia for the World um, Cross Country uh, Championships, Lusaka, Zambia for the uh, African Championships, uh, Trinidad and Tobago for the Commonwealth Youth uh, Championships. Now we have Budapest going on for the World Athletics Championships. I have not attended one, not a single one. I have not been there. And because we sort of um, have to make a choice, should the cabinet secretary go or should the technical officer go? And now for Budapest, because this is a big event, this is the World Cup of Athletics, mm -hmm. we made a decision that the principal secretary will go. Okay. And principal secretary engineer Peter Tumu is in Budapest right now, and he's accompanied by just one government officer, the director of sports. Okay. And so we, I believe we are managing resources very prudently. Okay. And if you, if you claim that... Um, some government officials have been carrying baggage, okay, or luggage <laughs> that is inappropriate on these trips. It should be really easy to submit the list because these lists are available. The matter we were debating today or discussing today on the Paralympics Games in Berlin, we sent again only two officers to Berlin. The CEO of the Kenya Academy of Sports, Dr. Dorino Diambo, and uh, the acting uh, director of sports. Those are the only two people we sent as government mm -hmm. or as a ministry for a Paralympic event, which is really a big event. But you should also realize that when an event like that happens, you will have the federation carrying its officials. Mm -hmm. You will have um, maybe parliament sending officials, like in Budapest, parliament has sent uh, the, the committee. chair, mm -hmm. the chair of the committee, mm -hmm. which is perfectly in order. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, it would also be important to disaggregate yeah. and know that these are delegation of the federation, these are delegation of parliament. Could there be the problem? Could that be the point of the problem away from your ministry that you can well account for? Is the other delegation? which, by the way, is still funded by the taxpayer, yes, yes. could there be the problem? Because that's where I was going next. You would say you discount the ministry, mm -hmm. but look at the other delegations. Let me say that uh, ordinarily, when a federation seeks funding and the ministry approves the funding, we also ask for the full list. Okay. So of, you have the list. Of people. Of the yes, people we get the traveling. list. Okay. But you know, if someone is traveling, to Budapest and they travel they decide to carry their spouse on the side or maybe they decided to pay a ticket mm -hmm. for their spouse on the side that is something that may not come to our knowledge immediately because mm -hmm. they are not part of the list that they are not accredited the by the yes, ministry yes, to travel yes they're okay. not part of that list that comes to us and I can tell you for instance that um, you may decide you want to travel with your child okay and you are paying that ticket, that ticket separately, the name of that child will not appear okay. on the official list that you bring to us. And, and, and I believe that may not be inappropriate. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It, it would be an issue if then it becomes part of the official delegation and um, the public pass is being used to, to, to pay for it. What if they use that office to obtain their visas for travel? Is that still appropriate? Uh, that will not be appropriate. That will not be appropriate. Okay. Mm. I want to talk about the Talanta Hela. Yes. Because on the 9th, you disbanded mm. the, uh, was it uh, the committee? The, technical the committee? steering committee. The, steering the technical committee. committee. Technical yes. committee. Mm. Mm. Um, there are the people who run Talanta Hela, mm. right? That committee. Then on the 10th, you had State House launching this. Mm. It was a big issue also. Yeah. Why did you launch something that now is being questioned as did not exist? At the time, you robbed in the president to come and launch. <laughs> it's a big question. It, it, it is actually a misunderstanding of the whole issue. First of all, those technical committees were not Talanta Hela. Talanta Hela is not a committee. Talanta Hela is an initiative. Talanta Hela is a flagship initiative. Talanta Hela did not exist because of the technical committees. The technical committees existed because of Talanta Hela. And we put in these technical committees
to support the implementation of Talanta Hela. From the very beginning, we made two things clear. Number one, that Talanta Hela was the consolidation of the promise in the plan of Kenya Kwanzaa and the bottom-up economic transformation agenda as a policy frame on how to monetize sports and the creatives. And we just picked, we consolidated all the promises in the plan, which is a manifesto, mm -hmm. and what better has put together in the area of sports and the creatives, and consolidated that and gave it the brand name Talanta Hela. A lot of the activities that are being done by Talanta Hela are really not new. They are just activities that we have given fresh impetus. Let me give you an example. We have always had the Kenya National Theatre. The Kenya National Theatre has always had the Kenya National Theatre Awards, but those awards had never been monetized. This year we monetized those awards. From the government, because from they, government, they usually yes. sought sponsorship. Yes, from, from elsewhere. Before. Yes. Now this year, I attended those awards, I made a committee to the Thespians at the Kenya National Theatre, mm -hmm. and then we put together a package and gave 100,000 shillings to each of the 38 winners of those awards. So we have taken a program that has actually been running and just given it a monetary value, okay? Let me give you another example. The Kenya Academy of Sports. The Kenya Academy of Sports has existed since we enacted the sports and supporting talent development. What have we done? We have given the, this academy the mandate to go into schools, to go into colleges, and start being part of a pipeline to identify and progress talents. And that is why for the first time, during the school ball games that climaxed at Bohungu Stadium in Kakamega, we had scouts watching all those disciplines from rugby to football to tennis to hockey. And they selected 2,000 young people who were then invited to the academy. The academy hosted 2,000 young people in football and all these other disciplines. During that talent camp, they were coached by elite coaches, including our legends like, uh, uh, like uh, Joseph at Murilla, like Richard Madegua, okay? like Wina Shilavula, people who have really been there. They were coached by real elite coaches. They were also scouted by federations, by academies, and, um, and, 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 and other interested groups. Mm -hmm. Both that, local and international? Both local and international. Okay. That is activating the Kenya Academy of Sport and making it a real academy. Okay. And the implementation of the Talanta Hela Initiative is supposed to be through established government institutions. The anchor of the implementation is actually the Kenya Academy of Sports, supported by the Kenya Cultural Center, the presidential, the permanent presidential music commission, which we are now turning into the creatives commission okay. and the Kenya Film Commission. So it is these institutions that are anchoring the implementation of Talanta Hela. The technical committees were intended to bring in skills that may not have necessarily been available in these institutions. Churchill Ndambuki, for instance, is the father of stand-up comedy in this country. We believed that his presence would aid, would add some value to that process. Mm -hmm. Keta Tress is one of the biggest names in film in, in Kenya today. Julius Yego is a self-made javelin champion. Okay? Sami Shalei, brilliant footballer, played for Tasca, played for, for Harambe Stars. Those are some of the names that we brought into the mix to add value from their spaces. But they were really, that is, that is not what Atlanta Hela was. Mm -hmm. They were simply supposed to come in to provide backup, to provide support to the government institutions. Mm -hmm. Then someone goes to court to challenge those technical committees. And the court, in its wisdom, rules that then the program should be frozen until that, that case is uh, concluded. Yeah. We feared that if we went that route, the program would actually have stalled. Because sometimes the wheels of justice in this country can move pretty slowly. And so, to separate the program from the technical committees, mm -hmm. we pulled back the technical committees so to allow the this, program. Where do you get this backup now? Because you brought them in as backup. Yes. For 
the skills that didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So when you take it out, and I, I believe this was purpose, this is mm -hmm. the way it was supposed to yes. run. So when you take it out, where does this backup come from now? We have made it, we have um, allowed a lot of these people and many other people to volunteer their services to, to the program. And many of them have done that. Unofficially? Unofficially. Like, for instance, I can confirm here, during the National Talent Camp, uh, not just the camp actually, even during the school ball games, we had people like Sam Michelet, who was on that technical committee, heavily involved in the talent search during the school ball games. When the young people came to Nairobi for the National Talent Camp, we had people like Richard Madewa, we had people like uh, Sam Michelet, we had people like Wina Shilavula, we had a lot of these legends, Joseph at Murilla, who we had tapped. We asked them whether they would want to continue to be part of this, and they came. Okay. And they were, they were able to mentor these young people, they were able to coach these young people, they were able to help us to do even selection. Okay. Today, <coughs> excuse me, if the Harambe Stars coach today decided that he wants to form an under 15 Harambe Stars, you have the team, or an under 17 Harambe Stars, he has a pool, a huge pool. We can tell him, look at these 200 kids. They're from Kakamega, they're from Shimolatewa, they're from uh, Muranga, they're from all over the country. We can tell them, look at them, and you might just be able to get a first 11 mm -hmm. from these school kids. And that is the whole purpose, to create a pipeline where talents can progress from the grassroots to a level where the country benefits from them. Early this year, <clears throat> we funded, and let me actually confirm that all these things happen in schools. The school's drama and film festival, the school ball games, the music festival. We had the presidential concert today in Nakuru. I was in Nakuru actually before I came to parliament with the president. All these activities have been funded by this ministry to the tune of 267 million shillings, which we handed to the Minister of Education so that this program can be run more efficiently, more effectively. And that is why we are working so closely with the Minister of Education to tap because the natural ecosystem for talents in this country is the school ecosystem. Okay, that's why it starts. For drama and festival, mm -hmm. if I can just give one last example. <clears throat> the best play from the school's drama and film festival was an absolutely gripping production called The Eyes Have It, produced by Riara School. It was so gripping that actually it, it even blew the president into smithereens during the presidential concert at Stud House. We have picked that production. We are monetizing it. And in November, during the next Kenya National Theatre Awards, it is going to be the star performance okay. at, 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 uh, at that festival. The same thing we are doing with the music festival, which you concluded today. Mm -hmm. And so, Talanta Hela is about creating a conveyor belt. Okay. Right now, the inter-county football is going on all over the country. That is another platform to allow young people. And then it's under 19 young people to showcase what they are made of. So Talanta Hela is going on. Okay. Yes. So <clears throat> the allegation that um, you are not ready because you were pushed by parliament and uh, they wanted to know why this was launched and yet... It wasn't ready because you said, because of procurement issues, right? The Let me clarify that. Yes. You know, Talanta Hela is an, is an ecosystem of many activities. As I've, I've, as I've said, there are talent, in fact, there are five pillars of Talanta Hela, if I may quickly explain that. There is the talent identification and progression, which include like picking kids from schools and bringing them to the academy. There is the infrastructure development, the program we are running on infrastructure development right now is part of that Atlanta Hela initiative. Okay? We were able to quickly get Nyayo to have the suspension by calf lifted. That is how Kakamega Homeboys mm -hmm. was able to play Al Hilal of Libya last Saturday at Nyayo. We were able to quickly prepare Kipchoge Keino Stadium to be able to host the devolution conference sporting activities. So all that infrastructure development plan is part of that Atlanta Hela. We have a partnership, what you're calling part forging partnerships, 
we have signed an agreement with Tress to run a program. Tress Music? Tress Music. To run a program called Who's Next? Who's Next is a big initiative to discover Kenya's next big music talent. And we are going to pick 30 of the best, picked from the counties, to progress them, to train them through Tress Academy, to record their first album, and to expose them on Tress platforms, Tress TV, Tress Muziki, Tress Radio, government. fully funded by it's a partnership between government and Tress. Okay. And Tress is putting in quite a bit of money for that also, as, as part of that Not only giving the platform. Not just a platform. Okay. The other pillar of Talanta Hela is um, uh, what you are calling the Presidential Innovation Challenge and Award. We launched this in Eldoret last uh, Friday, and we are inviting Kenyan innovators to log into a platform. It's an online platform, it's a digital platform, and bring innovations. The best innovations, again, will be provided with the opportunity to, to be incubated. We are giving five million shillings to the best innovation as a startup fund to help you drive your innovation to a point where it can become an entrepreneurship, okay? And the last thing we are doing is to sort the creative industry. You know that one of the biggest challenges in the creative industry is royalties. Musicians will always tell you, we hear our songs being played in matatus, in entertainment places. But we don't, we don't see any money. Yeah. We have moved into that space. We have collapsed the three CMOs, the collection, uh, uh, management organization CMOs to have a single platform where they can reduce administrative costs and give more money to creatives. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I gazetted new tariffs the other day so that we can raise more revenue for that. And now we are launching what's called the blank tech levy, which will help us to collect more money. So, Talanta Hela <laughs> is, is a massive thing. It's, it's, it's a huge thing, and it is going on. The thing that I was trying to explain to members of parliament today is what they were calling the app. Because part of this Talanta Hela ecosystem is taking advantage of the digital superhighway. Now, the system is ready. The Talanta Hela digital system is ready. The president unveiled it. The challenge that we ran into was what is called the screening room. If you are in Migori, you, you, you believe you can play football. Talanta Hela Digital works in such a way that you can take a one-minute clip. Use your phone, take a one-minute clip, upload it onto the Talanta Hela app, mm -hmm. and it will go in real time to a command screening room at the Kenya Academy of Sports in Kasarani. Okay. And there we'll have, we have like 20 television screens where this clips can come in and you'll have coaches and, and scouts to look at it and see how to progress those talents. Okay. What I was explaining to members of parliament was that that screening room at Kasarani yes. was delayed because of procurement issues, but it is ongoing. Okay. We have actually been given the date of September 4th yes. and everything will be set up. Okay. But the system is ready. So that, that's, that's, that's explanation of what was it ready. So when the president came and launched this, you are actually... Everything ready. was ready. Everything, Everything was, was good ready. to go, yes. Okay. I'd like to play the video of the week. Mm -hmm. Then I want to ask you a question that was a subject of discussion last week. Mm -hmm. uh, after the video of the week, if it's ready, if it's not ready, let me ask you then. Uh, would, the burning of TikTok in Kenya, <clears throat> where you sit, because this is falls on your docket. Mm -hmm. What's your view? The burning of TikTok. I know it, it came from a businessman, mm -hmm. Bob Ndolo, mm -hmm. and it went to Parliament and discussed in Parliament. But as Ababu Namwamba, mm -hmm. what's your take on the burning of that platform, which we know? Well, to not, like at night, I like this time. There's a lot of issues inside there, mm -hmm. but mostly it generates income. Mm -hmm. What's your take on this burning of TikTok? TikTok is an TikTok is an important digital platform for content creation. Uh, just like we have platforms like uh, YouTube, even socials like um, Facebook, um, Twitter now called X, all those are platforms that are key for our content creators. And let me tell you, uh, content creation is big business. It's really, really big business. It carries 
incredible potential to provide livelihoods for a lot of our young people. TikTok has had its challenges. Uh, you get some really young people completely hooked onto it. Some of the content may be uh, veer into the province of the inappropriate. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is to engage the management of TikTok to regulate some of the negative elements of that platform. And I can tell you that today, His Excellency the President actually pronounced himself on that matter from Nakuru uh, State House during the um, music finalists concert. And the point he made is actually the point that I support, that we can manage that space better and make it beneficial to our creatives, okay. to our content creators. Okay. So banning it, I would be reluctant to ban it. But regulating it mm -hmm. and making it appropriate for our market, appropriate for our, our, our national ethos and values, while providing opportunity for our content creators to monetize their, 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 their creativity is something really, really we should invest in. Okay, let's play the video of the week and then we'll come back for Ababu's final comment. They are looking for a house girl and they are looking for a house help to take care of their children. Mm -hmm. You hear them say, Akuen at Masomo ya form four. Yes. I want a house girl who can do homework with my children. Mm -hmm. Now, when they are looking for an MCA, they want a birth certificate. Is <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a problem, but think about it this way. When we went to class 8, we never did a sum anything more than 10 million. Mm. In fact, in Likoya, nini 10 million. Mm. At Form 4 is when we started learning that 100 million looks like this. Mm. Most of us got <coughs> to learn that a billion has nine zeros after Form 4. And even many of our viewers do not know that a billion has got nine zeros. Mm. Now, you elect someone not because of their qualifications. And many qualified people have vied for seats of MCAs, including where I vied. Mm. But people have chosen a Form 2 or a Form 1. Now, when he goes, he sees 11 zeros following a number. And that's the first time he's seeing 11 <laughs> zeros following a number. I like Fanya Mambo because of the way he puts, uh, he puts it out there. And because we were talking about governance and the president's stance on, uh, in relation to the people who work under him, um, what's your take on that fact that we are more vigilant at home when we want to hire nannies, for example, mm -hmm. than when we want to elect officials? Mm -hmm. And by translation, when we want to give jobs mm -hmm. to other people? I think it uh, is, is a genuine concern. We have to be very careful who we hand responsibility for our public affairs to. Whether those are public affairs through elective office, meaning how much we screen the people we elect to office, whether it is at the level of the MCA, the member of parliament or the governor or the president for that matter. Uh, the people we put in public office by reason of appointment, a cabinet secretary, a principal secretary or whatever. We certainly have to be more vigilant because at the end of the day, a country is as good as the leadership that, uh, that drives the vision of that country. Yeah. Finally, the sum total of our discussion tonight, mm -hmm. why is your party on your neck? Having said all this, mm -hmm. why are top members of your party from the second arm of the government on your neck? I am not aware of whether my party is on my neck because when you talk about the party the party is a is a is a whole system is a system of uh, leadership is a system of uh, grassroots uh, grassroots uh, presence i am not aware that my party is uh, on my neck um, and if my party is on my neck my party will tell me why they're on my neck and uh, if at all they're on my neck Today's session with Parliament is something which I take in my stride as an opportunity for me to engage with, um, with the oversight, the constitutional oversight institution of the state. 30 seconds. Have you been eating alone in the sport ministry? What have I been eating? I inherited uh, a pretty much bankrupt space. Okay. And um, right now I am scrapping the bottom of the barrel to get resources to deal with urgent, important, 
assignments and commitments that have been neglected way too long. If there are any resources in that ministry, and there are very limited resources, I can tell you, even the so-called sports fund, it is a fund where so many hands dip in. This is a fund that supports education, it supports health, it supports culture, it supports so many other spaces. That's why I was telling Parliament today, it, it would be very useful to implement the presidential directive to ring fence this fund just for sports and the arts. So there is nothing to be eaten. C.S. Sababu Namwamba, yes. thank you so much for coming tonight yes. on News uh, and all the best. Asante. All right, as he makes his way out, a total of 3.8 million learners will be sitting this year's national examination. Now, the exams are set to start on October 30th. Statistics from the Kenya National Examination Council shows that this year's Kenya Certificate of Primary Education has over 100.